Hey everybody, this is Dr. Andrew Kim, MD. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, and today we're going to continue our educational series by discussing an important topic, alcohol withdrawal. And today we're going to give you a non-sugar-coated, very straightforward, easy to understand explanation of alcohol withdrawal and what to expect when your body goes through this. Now, why is this even an important topic? At this very moment, right now as we speak, at least, at least one in 10 Americans meets the criteria for either alcohol abuse or alcohol dependence, which we now call alcohol use disorder. About half of these individuals will experience some degree or some form of alcohol withdrawal if they decided to stop drinking all of a sudden or to cut back on their drinking. Now, fortunately, in many cases, alcohol withdrawal will be mild or moderate, but about one in five cases will be considered severe, and in these severe cases, there can be potential lethal outcomes, meaning death, okay? And I know that sounds scary, but that's the truth. We often don't associate coming off of alcohol or detoxing from alcohol with death. We tend to think about hard drugs or illicit substances not what we can grab in our grocery stores, at gas stations, that we drink to socialize and party with, but yes. And this is why this is a very serious topic. And look, for those of you out there who may be considering cutting back on alcohol or your alcohol use or stopping your drinking, again, this video is meant for educational purposes only. Always, always consult with your physician or licensed qualified medical professional for guidance and advice for your own situation because this can be a very serious situation. Without appropriate treatment, alcohol withdrawal can actually start kicking in within the first six to 24 hours after your last drink or six to 24 hours after you decided to cut back on your alcohol use. So that's one of the main things I wanna get across here is that if you drink regularly enough and heavily enough, you actually don't need to have a blood alcohol level of zero to start going through withdrawal. That's a myth that people have that, well, I still have alcohol in me, so I'm good. I can wait to go get treatment or seek help later. No. If you are a heavy enough drinker, even just a change in your usual blood alcohol level that your body is used to can start triggering alcohol withdrawal. So again, this can start happening in the first six to 24 hours after your last drink, or six to 24 hours after you started cutting back on your usual alcohol intake. So let's begin with some of the mild to moderate signs and symptoms of alcohol withdrawal. And these are the ones you're probably most familiar with already. So as people start to experience mild to moderate signs and symptoms, you may experience bodily symptoms like shakiness and tremors, headaches, feeling on edge, feeling agitated and more snappy, sleep disturbances, noticing it's harder to fall asleep or you're waking up more often, and you can also start experiencing changes in your vital signs. Your heart is racing faster, you're noticing skip beats, your blood pressure is skyrocketing and going very high. You might have stomach issues like nausea and even vomiting in more moderate cases. Now, you combine all of these things, you feel uncomfortable, you feel distressed, you feel anxious and distressed, and you basically start noticing you have more cravings and urges to go back to drinking more alcohol to make these signs and symptoms get milder or go away. So basically you're self-medicating and kind of perpetuating the cycle because you don't want to feel this way and you don't want to feel this discomfort from alcohol withdrawal. Now in milder cases, these mild signs and symptoms may go away in one to two days. In more moderate cases, it could be three to five days, okay? But bottom line is, it's these withdrawal symptoms, even though they're mild, which may continue to perpetuate somebody's drinking because they say, I don't wanna feel this way, and I notice that when I start drinking, it kinda of goes away, and it may just kinda of continue the cycle of problematic drinking. Now let's move on to some of the more severe withdrawal syndromes. One of the ones that doesn't get a lot of press or attention is a withdrawal phenomenon called alcoholic hallucinosis. Alcoholic hallucinosis. This can start occurring within 12 to 24 hours after your last drink or major reduction in your alcohol consumption. 
So what is this? This is basically a state of mind where although you are still oriented, you know the year, you know the month, the date, you know where you are, you know what's going on around you, yet you are still starting to experience hallucinations. That's right, hallucinations. Primarily visual hallucinations, meaning you are seeing things. So even though these objects are not actually in the room and other people can't see them, you are hallucinating and seeing things around you. Sometimes people report seeing shadow figures, figures of people, animals, insects, objects that other people can't see. You may also experience auditory hallucinations, hearing sounds and hearing voices that other people around you are not noticing. And also feeling things on your skin as if something is touching you or crawling on you. Okay, this can be a very distressing and scary experience for people who experience alcoholic hallucinosis. It could be confusing. Their loved ones or people around them in the hospital or, or at their homes may not understand what they're going through. But this is a phenomenon that could happen and typically it lasts for a few days. In some rarer cases, it can last for weeks at a time. Okay. This is not a sign of a psychotic disorder or chronic psychosis like schizophrenia, but it is something that happens during withdrawal if you are having moderate to severe withdrawal for certain patients. So that's a summary of alcoholic hallucinosis. The next severe outcome of alcohol withdrawal that we'll discuss are alcohol withdrawal seizures. Yes, you can actually have seizures or convulsions from coming off of alcohol. And this is what makes alcohol withdrawal so scary. Now typically, these seizures have a peak onset or they tend to occur most commonly from six hours to 48 hours after your last drink. But in some cases, they can even happen three days out, up to 72 hours after your last drink, okay? So think about what I just said before we describe this further. Even as soon as six hours, if you remember back a few minutes ago, I said mild withdrawal can happen within six hours from your last drink. So in some situations and in some cases, people may have a withdrawal seizure within the first day or within even the first six hours of stopping their drinking or reducing their drinking. And that's what makes this so scary, okay? And it's estimated that anywhere from 10 to 30% of people who go through alcohol withdrawal will have an alcohol withdrawal seizure. Now what happens is this is a full-blown seizure, okay? You lose consciousness, you drop to the floor, and you start convulsing or shaking on the ground, all right? You may lose control of your bladder, you may end up biting your tongue, okay? And it may be one seizure, but here's the concerning part, it may not just be one, you may have a series of a few seizures that occur in a short span of time. So if someone goes through this and they happen to have this in their home setting, not in a hospital, just because you have one doesn't mean you're out of the woods or in the clear. You need to seek help immediately because further seizures may happen if you don't get your alcohol withdrawal treated appropriately. So again, this is not epilepsy, okay, where you have chronic seizures for your entire life, but these are withdrawal seizures or alcohol withdrawal seizures that occur because your body and your brain are coming off of alcohol because you stopped drinking or re you reduced your moderate to heavy drinking. So this is a summary of alcohol withdrawal seizures. One of the final severe potential outcomes of alcohol withdrawal we're going to discuss today is alcohol withdrawal delirium, or better known as delirium tremens, or DTs for short. This one you actually may have heard of because it's kind of in our pop culture. There's even alcoholic beverages and beers out there that are called the DTs or delirium tremens. So you might be familiar with the lingo, but let's jump into a description of what this is. Now, unlike what we described in alcoholic hallucinosis, where I said that you actually are still oriented and you're maintaining your cognition of what's going on around you, this is a state of delirium. Basically, your mental state is going back and forth between being clear and lucid to very confused. And that can change in the span of minutes to hours multiple times a day. So it's a confusional state that goes back and forth from clear to confused, clear to confused. And along with it, in severe cases, you can also have hallucinations, severe, severe agitation, 
drenching night sweats or daytime sweats, and your vital signs may be all over the place. Fevers, high blood pressure, very high heart rate, that's very concerning, okay? And once you cross this line, this is the problem. We wanna prevent anybody from reaching the point of getting into a state of alcohol withdrawal delirium or DTs, because once you cross that line, oftentimes this will extend somebody's hospital stay or stay in an intensive care unit for days, if not weeks. And you are likely going to be, tr you're likely going to be treated with heavy duty benzodiazepines or tranquilizer medications, sedating medications, antipsychotics for your hallucinations and agitation, and it's a very complicating hospital course, okay? This can happen you know, anywhere from three days to four days out from your last drink, and we want to prevent this from occurring, okay? It's not even just about complicating or lengthening your hospital stay. This has a potential lethal outcome, even with appropriate treatment. Even with appropriate treatment, there is a mortality rate of one to 4%. Even with appropriate treatment in a hospital setting, one to 4% of people who experience and go through alcohol withdrawal delirium or delirium tremens may die, okay? And we want to prevent this, obviously. So I hope you found this review of alcohol withdrawal helpful and straightforward and informative. So what was the point of making this video? It was not for the purpose of creating some kind of scare tactic. Okay, look, trying to scare the hell out of someone into sobriety just doesn't work, okay? That's stupid, all right? But this was to just provide educational, truthful, factual information, okay? There's too much crap out there on Google and on YouTube, and I know that some people are dealing with this in secrecy because of shame, because of guilt, because of stigma, okay? And they're using the internet as their resource, all right? So they need some helpful, informative information out there. So look, if you are one of those folks who are struggling with alcohol use and alcohol use has started to affect your social life, your school life, your work life, your personal life, look, please seek some help. Whether that's through a support group, Alcoholics Anonymous, a crisis line, social worker, your primary care doctor, psychiatrist, nurse, friend, pastor, help is out there. You need to seek it. I know we're always not feeling ready for change at every single moment, but when you find yourself feeling ready, when you find yourself feeling motivated and you're holding on to that motivating factor, make that step, please seek some help, okay? This is Dr. Andrew Kim. Please like this video, share it with others. Let me know if you'd like to hear other topics related to alcohol, like what to expect during alcohol detox treatment. Uh, you know, what is the actual mechanism or biology of why we go through alcohol withdrawal? Let me know what you'd like to hear, okay? This is Dr. Andrew Kim. Signing off, please be happy, be healthy, be well everyone. Thank you for checking in.